for more on this, we've reached former Canadian astronaut Dave Williams. We've got him uh, on uh, a video call from Oakville, Ontario. Dave, how great a day is this for our two Canadian e extremely fantastic astronauts? You know what? This is a fantastic day for Josh and Ginny. It's a fantastic day for Canada. They've done an amazing job throughout their whole training, and it's so exciting thinking about leaving low Earth orbit, going back to the moon, and maybe on to Mars. When we uh, when they graduate, it's because of the basic training program. That's what they've gone through. Can you kind of walk me through what the tummy turning moments of that basic training are? Well, they were hired in July of 2017. They hit the ground running, and they've been doing that ever since. When you start to train as an astronaut, we joke, we say it's like drinking from a fire hose because there's so much information you have to learn. You've got to learn all about the systems on the spacecraft that you're going to be flying on, the International Space Station. You've got to learn about robotics, spacewalking. It's unbelievable the amount of information that they've learned in such a short time period. And what's the, I don't want to say dropout rate because they're all really smart people but how many people actually get this far to the graduating class to get their pins and then look forward to missions you know the success rate in the astronaut Canada training program is very high as you can imagine these are dedicated folks who dreamt of becoming an astronaut from the time they were kids and Today, the Canadian Space Agency has a young astronaut program hoping to stimulate and capture the imagination of young kids. So the dropout rate's very low. In fact, the most common reason for astronauts to not fly in space is a medical reason, and that can be uh, any range of medical problems. We try and keep people flying as best we can. Joshua Kutrick and Jennifer Sidey Gibbons, have you met these two? I have met them. In fact, I met them the first day they were hired as Canadian astronauts, July 1st, 2017. Right after uh, the announcement took place, I saw them uh, in the green room before the press conference, and they're both fantastic individuals. They've worked so hard, and they've done really, really well. They're, th they're at the top of their class, and, you know, David Saint-Jacques, Jeremy Hansen, mm -hmm. the other two Canadian astronauts, they both similarly did very well. So we're looking forward to getting a flight assignment for Jeremy and seeing Josh and Ginny ultimately fly in space. And do astronauts give each other advice? You know, like the, the keys are in the top left drawer? <laughs> Occasionally they do. You know, I was stuck in downtown traffic in Toronto. My phone rings. It's David Saint-Jacques on the space station calling a couple days before his spacewalk. He was doing some tasks that were very similar to the ones that I had done. So, done. so it was great to be able to ch talk to him when he was in space. I also want to ask you what you miss about all of this, because your heart is probably still there. You know, I think for all astronauts, our heart is always there. I love to be able to live a little bit vicariously through David, <laughs> Jeremy, Josh, and Ginny. But you know what? If somebody called and said, hey, would you be interested in going to Mars? I'd be the first to put my hand up. I bet you would. Speaking of Mars, what are the possibilities here that, you know, either one of our two astronauts goes to the moon or goes to Mars? What are, what's in their future? You know, I think the greatest probability is that they will go to the moon. And that's going to be really exciting because we have to go to the moon to develop the technology, to validate all the procedures, the habitats, the rovers, the equipment that we're going to need to explore Mars. So the next decade is about going back to the moon and living and working on the moon. And then maybe around 2030, 2035 or so, we'll see those first human missions to Mars. And those are going to be really, really exciting. So, you know, 2025, that's not that far away way um would you go back to the moon do you think if you if you had the opportunity to choose you know at this point the focus of nasa and the international partners is to be able to go back to the moon to create the lunar gateway program to have astronauts living on this space station orbiting the moon but also living on the surface of the moon exploring the moon so the next decade is very lunar focused i'd love to be able to go to the moon can you imagine what it'd be like walking on the surface of the moon, seeing an Earth rise over the horizon. Absolutely amazing. You know what? I think there are people who, who dream about those things, and then there's the rest of us. <laughs> and you're one of those guys, and we're so happy that you do dream about that kind of stuff because it moves us forward. Um, so I want to thank you, Dave, for talking to me, for giving me some insight into our astronauts, and a, and a big you know, happy hurrah to them. Thank you for your time, Dave.
Oh, my pleasure. And congratulations to Josh and Ginny. They've made us proud. Absolutely. Dave Williams, former Canadian astronaut. We reached him in Oakville, Ontario.